What's happening, folks? Thank you for tuning in today to The Educator, a.k.a. Ed Whitehead, a.k.a. Coach Ed, a.k.a. Sir Prince Ed. And today, <laughs> we're going to be um, uh, looking at some parkour gear. Maybe you've never done parkour before, you're figuring out, what do I wear, right? What do I uh, put on my feet? What do I put on my body so that I stay warm and nice, uh, in insulated from the, uh, the elements? Well, we're going to discuss that today, show you a couple of different options. Uh, and for um, you know, a couple of different scenarios. So let's go take a gander. So, you know, if, uh, if I'm gonna be doing some gym training, uh, these kinds of items are what I would personally like to wear. Um, you know, a pair of shorts, um, zipped pockets definitely help. You know, if you've got your phone on you or keys, um, you know, if you're going to uh, you're a, a new gym and you don't quite know uh, the people there keep all your stuff in your pockets um, you want stuff definitely that's going to be moisture wicking it gets hot in gyms uh, you know all year round um, uh, I've got you know depending on like, the kind of training I'm going to do I'm doing sort of more low impact cardio uh, kind of stuff I might do something like a low top uh, like these ultra range Rapid Worlds over here. I've got uh, the high top version for more sort of, um, you know, like techy and, um, you know, uh, think, you know, uh, training that's gonna like be a little bit more demanding. Just got that extra, like, little bit of ankle stability in there. Some people don't like it. I personally do. Uh, personal preference, I think. Um, you know, a couple brands that I really like are American Eagle, um, just because they do the um, tall. Uh, all fit for uh, shirts because I've got a really long uh, sort of lanky torso so like, going for the medium tall is great um, you know uh, another brand I really love is Fabletics uh, for men and um, you know their stuff is just made really really well um, it feels you know like you're wearing next to nothing um, they're super you know like like wearing silk it's it's just so comfortable so light so breathable um if you're getting a sweat on um you know the, these are the kinds of things i would definitely uh recommend you guys wearing a pick up so here we have a couple of different examples of um some of the i might wear out to training um you know if you're um going outside you've got a couple different options you know uh, if it gets a little cooler out and you need to stay warm uh things like that so here i've got more sort of like an og kind of uh parkour uh <laughs> practitioner get up i've got my etras there uh, overpriced um huge baggy sweatpants best sweatpants in the world though uh hands down um, you know, they're super utilitarian. They've got all these cool features, like you know, you've got like zipped pockets, and then on the other side here, you've got like a loop for your t shirt. Um, if you get sweaty, uh, the t shirt itself is actually a little bit of um, like stretchy fabric, like polyester or something like that. Um, they're made really well, uh, fits really well too. Uh, got my Farang. Uh, uh, sweater here and representing um, one of my favorite gyms uh, hub in Boston um, you know it's cool to be able to show off uh, a little bit of parkour pride when you can uh, in outfits kind of like this um, you know it, it, parkour gear from parkour companies can get a little bit pricey uh, so just uh, watch out for that um, you know if you uh, definitely go ahead support the community um, but you know, it's going to put a bit of a dent in your wallet, so just be prepared for that. Um, over here, we got so uh, more like uh, you know, sort of casual practitioners get up. Um, saw American Eagle here, uh, just like um, you know, sweater, t-shirt, uh, joggers, and you know, like zipped pockets are great. Uh, these ones, you know, they even have like a little uh, slide-in compartment for your phone, so it's not like wobbling about. Um, in your pocket when you jump in doing flips and stuff. Got, my, um, got me a Fabletics cap as well. I really like the Fabletics cap because it um, it gives you, um, you're able to tighten it specifically to how you like. Um, so it helps you know, it uh, not falling off of your head if you're doing flips and stuff like that. And it also has like these like aerated um, panels. 
that breathes really well. Again, I've got my uh, mid-top ultra ranges here. Nice, uh, you know, good support in the ankle, good support in the heel, nice tread, great for uh, uh, pound and pavement. Another thing to consider uh, when you're preparing your outfit for uh, outdoor training, um, you know, what is the difference between doing training in a gym versus outside is that, you know, in a gym, everything is kind of controlled, right? So you have, uh, you know, you have AC, you have heating, uh, you know, for when it's uh, hot and cold outside, specifically. And you've got monsters like this getting in your video. Take a look, there's Nina. This is your moment of Nina. There you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, everything is kind of controlled, right? So, um, you don't need to think about that much. You just kind of want to be comfortable indoors, right? And uh, you're going to be fine. Uh, outdoors. <laughs> you don't want to make my job easy, do you? point is, is that you know you're going to be um not just having to think about the temperature um when you're going out to train outside uh you know you're going to be working with multiple different kinds of surfaces uh different kinds of brick concrete um you know stucco things like that um you know that might you know crumble off or you know um there might be like other hazardous elements like broken glass in some spaces um, you know, especially if you're training outside in urban areas, it's just kind of a part of like being outside uh, in you know city spaces. You know, you're gonna find trash and things like that. You wanna be really careful about um, uh, you know what you're wearing because to some degree you want to be able to protect yourself. And you know, in, our, in the next video talking about spots, we're gonna talk a bit more about like you know how do you make a spot safe and things like that for you to train. But uh, at any rate, one of, one of the um, ways that you can help with that is uh, your clothing. I would definitely recommend, uh, you know, if you're a newcomer to, to parkour, to uh, you know, stick to your know, longer sleeved things, uh, you know, um, you know, pants that are you know, going to cover your shins and things like that. Is that at the very least then, you know, you're kind of protected um, against grazes and things like that. Um, you know, a shinner is still going to suck uh, underneath uh, the fabric of a pair of sweatpants, uh, but at, at the very least, um, it will kind of give you some sort of protective layer um, so that you're not um, fully exposed, you're not got like dirt and grit getting into uh, uh, that chin wound there. Um, you know, you want to think also about, you know, packing, you know, relatively light, you know, because you want to be able to, uh, one, you want to be able to move. Um, effectively and um, comfortably. Uh, moisture wicking is definitely really, really important, um, not just in the summer months, but also in the winter months too. You know, if you, you're moving around and your clothes are sodden in sweat and then you suddenly stop moving, uh, you're gonna get really cold, <laughs> right? So you want to have stuff that's gonna dry quickly. Um, you know, even like prepare for like a contingency, you know, like have, Make sure you have like a rain jacket and things like that. Just like basic, um, you know, sort of like outdoor survival stuff, really. You know, you just, you want to think smart. You want to make sure that, you know, you're prepared um, for any kind of scenario that life might throw at you. And with that, we're going to take a look at some other gear that you may not have considered bringing with you. First aid kit. Super, super smart um, to, you know, what, regardless of what skill level you're at, uh, to have a first aid kit, right? And it makes sense, doesn't it? Because, you know, um, accidents happen, right? You can get cuts and scrapes and all manner of certain things, right, happen to you. Uh, so, um, this guy uh, cost me about, um, I want to say it was like 15 to 20 bucks. They're not super expensive um, and it has all the kind of basic like first aid things so for things like cuts, scrapes, uh, sprains, uh, things like that, um, you know, you're going to be covered. Uh, so let's take a dive in and see what we've got in here. Okay, so, uh, yeah. so first thing you see, uh, 
instant ice pack, right? These are really, really good um, because, you know, you can't obviously be tracking around like an ice box with you. And you know, if you have a cold compress that's, that goes in the freezer and you carry that with you, inevitably it's gonna get warm again, right? So these are really good uh, because all you have to do is just pinch them and there's a chemical reaction and they're instantly cold, right? So if you, you know, I don't know, if you bang your knee or you have you sprain your ankle or something, really, really good idea to get um, a cold compress on that because that's going to help with the inflammation and that's going to help with the pain. Uh, the other thing um, that you won't get in um, a, uh, a first aid kit, but you know they'll be like right next to it in the, you know the pharmacy in the aisle. Uh, ace bandages. Okay, so these are self-adhesive, stretchy bandages and these are good for a number of reasons um you know um if you have like a sprain say like if you do an ankle thing right um you want to follow uh the rice moniker right so that's rest ice compression and elevation right um so you know rest you uh stop doing what you're doing you ice it you've got your cold compress uh compression this guy right so you know you obviously don't want to be cutting off your uh, circulation and have your foot fall off but you want to be thinking about um you know giving it some sort of compression that's going to move some of that uh, inflammation out of there too um you know i'm not a doctor but i've had plenty of ankle sprains in my time uh so these um these are your friend if you have an ankle sprain right uh let's see so let's kind of go through kind of the order of things um, if we were to um, get a, a cut or a graze or a gash or something like that. Um, gloves, okay, little uh, plastic um, like nitrile uh, safety gloves. Super important, especially if you're helping someone else out, if you're out training them, right? You don't want to be getting anywhere near that cut uh, for, a num for a couple of reasons, right? Uh, the first one is you don't want to be contaminating that um, cut with anything that might be on your hands, right? Uh, the other thing too is you don't want their blood on you, right? You don't know what's in their body, uh, right? Uh, not to say that they're like nefarious or anything like that, but you just don't know, right? Um, so it's really, really important to uh, put some gloves on, especially when you're working with like cuts and scrapes and gashes, right? Because you want to, um, you know, one, protect yourself and also protect the person that you're, uh, you're helping, right? Um, then you're going to be wanting to, no, that's later. Um, you you want to uh, clean your hands with this. Um, so it's like a little uh, towel. Um, has like a little bit of alcohol in it um, that's gonna sanitize your hands. It's also a good idea to take a fresh one and kind of just wipe over the cut as well. It's gonna sting real bad, uh, but it's for their benefit. <laughs> so you just wanna let them know like, hey, this is gonna sting real bad for a second, but it's for your own good, um, right? So that's good. Um, Neosporin, uh, bacitracin, any kind of triple antibiotic ointment uh, is good because um, that's gonna stop things like um, and things like that um, you get an infection in the cut. So after you've cleaned it off, um, you're gonna put a little squirt of that on and it'll be fine. So then after that, you're gonna have one of these gauze things, right? So you're gonna open it up and um, you're going to use that to put on the top of the cut or gash and then you're gonna roll it with uh, some gauze. Uh, right, you wrap around, give it a little bit of compression. Again, not trying to get the, the um, their foot or shin or whatever to fall off, but you want to make sure there's some compression because that's going to help to stop the bleeding, things like that. Um, you know, for more minor things, um, you know, you've got um, basic band aid, nothing special. Um, you've got things like uh, Tylenol, right? Um, you know, any kind of NSAID um, or analgesic uh, painkiller is good to have on you uh, in case you do have like a meaty shinner or you whack your knee or something like that on like a Kong or something like that, just to kind of make you feel a bit more comfortable. And they do a couple of things. Um, so they're going to, uh, you know, reduce the inflammation and the pain, right? Um, so, you know, just take a couple, you know, if you're like, you're really, really hurting, um, these are good. Um, some things that you may not think about uh, that's good to have in a first aid kit is um, anti-itch cream, right? So you go to a spot um, and you, know, you don't know your plants, 
right? And you happen to come across, across them like uh, poison oak or poison ivy um, uh, here in the States, or you know, if you're in the UK, you come across some stinging nettles, right? Um, this is your friend, right? It's gonna help you make, help make you feel a lot more comfortable. Um, or say, you know, like, um, you're in the summer, like I know in New England, like um, out and about, like, mosquitoes are terrible. Um, or like say, like you get like um, a bee sting or a wasp sting out, you know, like um, your yellow jackets like flying about trash cans and things like that. Uh, this is your friend, right? And it's gonna help you a lot. Um, yeah, it's really good to, to have uh, just a basic first aid kit with you, you know, obviously it's not going to, you know, if you, if you hurt yourself really, really badly and you know, break something like this, not gonna help much, but it's gonna be, at the very least, you're going to be uh, somewhat prepared. Um, and, you know, even with like minor cuts and scrapes, right, you wanna treat them, you know, with the same respect. Um, like you know a, a gash or something like that um, because they may seem you know not that big of a deal at the time um, but they you know have the potential to get infected and then not heal right and then cause you all sorts of problems so it's always a good idea to kind of you know follow make sure you follow up on um, what you're doing with that and make sure that you take all the right steps make sure that um, you know, you're protecting yourself and so you're not putting yourself at risk for being put out of uh, you know, training due to a silly injury. Another good thing to carry on you, uh, especially in the uh, colder months, is a uh, down puffer jacket, right? Now these things are awesome, right? Because they are super light and they keep you super warm, right? So. You know, they go on like this, um, just like a, don't need to give you a tutorial of like how to put on a jacket, uh, but you know, it wears like a jacket, right? So you do it up, right? And you know, it's uh, insulated with uh, um, feathers essentially. Um, and uh, what's really cool about these is that they're super, super packable, right? So you stick it in your backpack, right? And they can get super, super small because they're essentially just full of air, right? And feathers. Right? So I can like scrunch this up into a ball if I wanted to. I didn't particularly care about how things look. And it, like it's super, super squishy. And you know, if you fold it properly and roll it up, um, you know, it becomes even smaller, right? So it's good, especially you know, in colder months, to have stuff like that um, because uh, it just like helps prepare you for. Uh, different contingencies. So, like, if there's a sudden drop of temperature, right? Um, you know, uh, or you're done training and uh, you know you're cold and sweaty and stuff. Like, you just stick that on, um, and it'll help insulate uh, body heat. Other things you'll want, obviously, if you're outdoors training, is a decent backpack, right? Uh, for all your valuables, water bottle, uh, your first aid kit, extra layers, things like that. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a super fancy one. Uh, this one uh, I got at like a consignment store, I think, and um, it cost me like, I don't know, like 30 or so dollars. Uh, but it's decent, right? Like it's, you know, somewhat durable, it's comfortable, it's easy to wear. You don't want to be like, you know, faffing about with, um, you know, silly tactical bags and things like that. Just like a decent backpack uh, with your, uh, you know, your gear in it, water bottle, stuff like that. Um, just want to make sure, you know, again, like it's not too heavy or anything, you know, you're lunking stuff around. You only need to carry as much as, as much stuff as you need, right? Uh, so, you know, like if you're out, um, you know, training in the summer, like maybe you don't need that puffer jacket or, um, you know, if you're, um, you know, if you're out somewhere, uh, like, you know, in a decent, you know, like urban area, right? Like. You, know, you could just as easily buy like a bottle of water versus like carry around one with you. I mean, you know, it's always better to carry water with you, better for the environment, better for you. You don't have to pay anything. Um, but you know, just think about, you know, think realistically about, um, you know, what you're bringing uh, you know, with you uh, to uh, a spot. And when you're out training, you know, you want to, you don't want to be, you know, over prepare, but you want to think, you know, I guess, especially when you're up in like Maine, like where I am. Um, 
you know, the, uh, the weather can change on the fly uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so, you know, always a good idea, you know, like check the forecast in the morning. Uh, if it's gonna rain, bring a raincoat. If it's gonna get cold, bring a jacket. You know, things like that. Um, and maybe a couple of snacks or something, you know, you don't need a, you know, a ton of stuff. You just wanna make sure that you bring, you know. You just wanna be internet famous, don't you? Don't you, my dear? Well, look, seeing as this is the end of the video, Nina's gonna get her nine minute, uh, nine seconds of glory before she gets too fussy. But look, you wanted to be in the video. Look, here you are. Look, why are you complaining? Why are you complaining? Do you want to be in the video or not? What do you think? There we go. So, thanks for joining us, uh, well, joining me today. Uh, I hope you guys found this um, informative and useful. Um, you know, I prescribe to the logic that you want to make sure that you're prepared for every eventuality, right? You want to make sure, um, you know, that you're, you're safe, you're dry, you're warm, um, you know, you got uh, water, you're fed, right? Um, and you just want to take everything uh, as seriously as you need to, right? You know, you don't want to be like bringing, you know, like splints or braces or things like that with you. Um, you know, to prepare for like injuries, but you know, things like scrapes and cuts, you know, have some band-aids, have some bacitracin, things like that. Um, you know, dress for what you're doing, right? Make sure it's flexible, make sure it's moisture wicking, things like that. Um, so on that note, thanks for tuning in. Uh, next video, we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, spots, you know, how to find good spots, how to you know, prepare um, for a spot, uh, and how to make spots safe and fun for you guys to train. So with that, we'll see you next video.